My name is Rich Gahan, um, I'm a specialist endodontist. I qualified from the Royal London, uh, had a short stint in general practice, started to do an endo course at the Eastman, fell in love with the um, practical elements of it and became um, an endodontist, stayed at teaching at the Eastman until eventually I was uh, head of um, endodontic CPD for a good few years. We set up a number of innovative courses. We did the certificate of endodontic practice. I then left the Eastman and more recently set up the Academy of Advanced Endodontics where we uh, will teach both general practitioners to try and do really good endo. I'm an old school endodontist. I think that's what we can call myself. I, I think sealers are sort of the, the Cinderella's of the endodontic world um, in that they're a little bit of, a, of an afterthought. Um, they are ever so important, um, but the reason why they're important isn't something that's kind of necessarily completely understood or appreciated by dentists. The sealer is there to create a three-dimensional obturation inside the root canal system which is what gives the treatment its longevity. So if you clean a root canal and you clean it really well and you left it empty it would probably work. It would certainly work in the short term. It would work over a period of months, even years, if you left it completely empty. But what would happen over time is, is eventually bacteria would get into those spaces, they would multiply and the problem would be back. So the sealer is there to ensure that bacteria and bacterial substrates, i.e. The, the food for the bacteria, cannot get in to the canal system. And we have to take it as being an absolute that we are never going to get rid of all the bacteria inside the root canal. So what we need is, is we need a seal inside there that will obviously stop bacteria themselves getting in, but stop food getting in to the bacteria that we've been unable to clean out. And a decent seal, something that will stop the substrate getting in, will ensure that your root canal treatment is gonna last a long period of time, which is what we want. We want it lasting 15, 20, 25 years, something like that. And so the ability of the sealer to get into all the little nooks and crannies, to seal it off, and importantly, to stay there and not to dissolve. So we need dimensional stability over an exceptionally long period of time. That's what you really look for in a sealer. I don't really look for the sealer to give antibacterial action. I mean, it'd be very nice if it does, okay? But that's not gonna last. Nothing that we have is going to be antibacterial forever. Um, yes, the sealers having a high pH generally will be antibacterial for a period of time, but after a while, bugs will happily grow on these materials. Okay, it is the ability to seal that's most important, and that it can get into all those little nooks and crannies and ensure that it um, that, that then nothing can get into there and allow those bacteria to regrow. So for many years, for many years, I used Roth sealer, which is a zinc oxide eugenol based sealer. Um, it, it, it's, it's a standard. It was probably the gold standard over, over for many years. Um, and I, I, I could watch, because I've used it for 70 years, what happened to the sealer over time. And it is well known, and it was well known, that the sealer, when you're using something like Roth's, is the weak part of the root filling. So the idea was is to get as much rubber as you could into the root canal system, and as little sealer. And the way in which you did that was by heating the rubber and pushing it in and using high forces, whether it was lateral condensation or if it was vertical condensation, using heat so that you could push the rubber in as far as it would go and then you'd only have a little bit of sealer. Why was the sealer the weak point? 
because it dissolves over time. And after a while, you would find that it disappears. By that, I mean years. I don't mean instantly, but years, okay? So I could look at root fillings that I'd done years ago, many years ago, patients coming back, perhaps for another tooth, and then I think, oh, I'll have a look and see what's gone on with that tooth that I root filled. And I was always disappointed to find that there was actually more sealer in my root filling than I thought. I was hoping that the rubber, it was all mainly rubber, but in fact, close to the end of the tooth, close to the apex, the seal that I had was sealer cement. And after five, six, seven years, it had gone, it had dissolved away. What that meant was, is there would be a space there and nature doesn't like spaces. So eventually, uh, the bugs that were left in the canal there from originally, because we'll never get rid of all of them, they had, well, they, they, the, the tissue fluid would come in through the apex where the space has now be opened up and those bacteria would start to grow. And so this would be a way in which the longevity of my root fillings would suffer. So I wanted to move across to a sealer particularly that wouldn't dissolve and had all the physical properties that allowed it to do its job well. The bioceramic sealers came about and I knew from the research that is done on them that they were pretty much stable and they didn't dissolve away. And I immediately started to think to myself, these are the kind of sealers that I want. Uh, biocompatible, um, more modern in that they, they produced with very fine particle sizes, which meant that they can flow more easily. Um, and related to MTA, which we had found over the years as well, that it is highly biocompatible and uh, you actually can get fibroblasts growing over it, you get bone healing and things like that that's going on. I knew, unfortunately, that I wasn't probably going to be able to tell the true value of these of the sealer because I hope that I won't be around for as long as needed to be able to look at them again in 20 years time to know, ah, that worked really well. I moved to a bioceramic sealer and I've used one now for probably six or seven years. Um, and I can show because, because we can certainly see that healing has occurred after using them. I can show plenty of cases where bone has grown around them really beautifully. What I can't show is, is that they've lasted 20 or 30 years because I've only, started, only used them five, six years ago. Um, but the material that I used, um, I found in a few cases that it hadn't set. And this is one of the, the kind of the downsides of the bioceramics. And certainly some of them, uh, they won't set unless there's moisture present in the canal. So you had to change the, the way in which you did things slightly. You weren't going to dry the canals quite as much. But there were cases that had come back to me where the GP that I put in had actually been removed by the dentist. And I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. And it was obvious to me that the bioceramic sealer hadn't actually set. So I therefore started to look for a bioceramic sealer, sealer that I knew set. Uh, and when you go through the literature um, and you look at what's being written up and the physical properties again, I found that endo seal as it is in the papers, um, had a pretty good um, set of results with, with regards to its physical properties, but also it set. It took three days to set, but it set. Whereas the other materials that I used, it was actually in the papers that in a number of cases, it never set. And I found that clinically, and I wasn't really happy with using a sealer that doesn't set. And that's how I landed up starting to use Sender Seal. It is a different way 
of using a sealer from the epoxy resins and from the zinc oxide eugenols. With those sealers, you have to consider them as being a weak point and you need to reduce the amount that's inside the canal. Whereas with the bioceramics, the sealer cement is actually the fill. And in fact, the reason why we put the GP into it is so that we have a way of getting back into them if, they, if, if we need to get back into them. So they are the bolt hole. So if, if, for example, you need to take the root filling out, if the whole thing was fully set by a ceramic, you wouldn't be able to remove the stuff. So we're now putting GP in as a weak point in order to remove the cement. And it's a kind of different way of looking at it. So previously, we were trying to stuff in as much rubber as we could. Now we're putting in the rubber, but we're relying on the sealer to do the sealing. So the technique is completely different. And the technique, it also means that you don't need to put as much forces onto the root canal system. So you don't need to put the heat into it, uh, which would weaken a tooth. You don't need to put big pluggers inside there. You don't need to actually condense it, right? Because the material will actually flow into those nooks and crannies. And the GP you just place in as your kind of instant remover should it ever come to that point. So it, 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 it's, it's, you have to change the technique. It is a simpler technique. Uh, it's kinder, you know? Um, by that I mean that um, it, it, because it doesn't require as many steps, you're more likely to get it right. So for the general practitioner, it should be very straightforward to place it in and for them not to find it, you know, that it, it, it doesn't produce the, the kind of result that they want. It's no faster than, than the, the warm verticals and the lateral conversations that, that we've done previously, but it's, it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and Sender Seal is, is no different from the other bioceramic sealers in itself. Um, the technique is the same and pretty straightforward. It was quite a dip change to, to move from the standard sealers to the bioceramic sealers. But once you're, you're using bioceramic sealers, it doesn't really matter which you use. So no, no difference in, in the changeover um, from one sealer to the other, um, from the bioceramics. But as I say, there's quite a large technique change um, that you have to bear in mind and you have to know what you're doing when you're moving from the standard sealers to this. It, as I said, it's a, different, it's a different way of doing things. The sealer itself is the root filling and the rubber is your get out clause. With the other sealers, the rubber is your root filling and the sealer is just the, the little extra bits to try and fill in the nooks and crannies that, that you couldn't get into. So it's a different way of doing things. If you had a root filling that was all bioceramic, you couldn't be able to get rid of it. Uh, and we need to get back into the canals because they will fail on you at some point, whether they'll fail a long time down the line or whether they'll fail early down because you didn't manage to get rid of all the bugs that you needed to. But will we ever be confident that we'll get rid of all the bugs? No, that there won't be a system, well, say, I, I couldn't predict that one, but um, there's never going to be a system that's going to sterilize the root canal system as such. Um, so there will always be bugs there, and those bugs will probably grow at some point, and getting back into the root canal system will be a way of, you know, uh, redoing the treatment again, and then keeping the tooth going for, a, you know, another set of 10, 15, 20 years, something like that. And what we can't have are long-term clinical trials on something like this. If you think about the, the, the logistics of trying to put a, some kind of trial whereby you're gonna compare one sort of sealer to another sort of sealer over a period of 10 or 15 or 20 years or something like that, and, and, and do it so that it should be randomly controlled and things like that, it just can't be done. So we, we're not gonna get that evidence um, we know certain things about the way in which root canal treatment works. So we know if we get the canals clean, clean enough, then we are going to get healing. 
uh, we know if we fill it with something, and we could fill it with anything, if the seal is good, then it's gonna last for a good number of years. If the seal starts to deteriorate over time, then we know that the spaces that will open up will allow substrate to get in, and it's usually tissue fluid, and the bugs will start to regrow again. So these are the kind of bits that we understand and that we know. What we've got to then find is something that has the physical properties that will allow us to, to kind of, you know, work with that. Um, and so what I really looked for was uh, the, the trials that are done that look at the flow of the sealer, the pH of the sealer, the healing, so tissue growth around the cement itself, whether fibroblasts could grow on it or not, uh, dimensional stability, um, you don't want anything that's going to shrink because then you're going to open up space. You don't want anything that's going to expand too much because then you're going to put pressure on the tooth. Um, what else do we look for? Yeah, uh, solubility. Because the solubility will tell us whether it was going to last for many, many years. Um, and so there are a great number of papers where they, they, they put the sealers up to next to one another and they test them for these properties. And uh, when I went through them, it, Endoseal came out pretty well, which is now Sendoseal. Um, and an important part was is that it's set, whereas uh, the one that I was using prior to Sendoseal, it doesn't set. Uh, and that was something that I found clinically as well. And I, I just, after a while, thought maybe I shouldn't be putting in a stuff that may not set. The idea of the sealer, is, it's such a small part of the root filling, but it's such an important part of it. And, and it's what I, yeah, when you try and put over to, to dentists to explain to them, um, they, they tend to think that, that it could be, it, it, it's magic, right? They tend to think, oh, I'll use this sealer and everything will work fine. It, it's not like that. All the sealer does is it ensures that your root filling lasts for a long period of time and, and the better the better that you get the sealer into all the little nooks and crannies, the longer it's going to last for. Don't trust it that it's going to make the tissues better, that it's going to be antibacterial, because that doesn't count. What counts is you getting it as clean as possible. Um, the sealer should be biocompatible, it should stay there and it should stop leakage. And as long as it does that, it'll be fine. If you wait for the evidence, you could sit on the fence forever, yeah. because there never will be the evidence that you need, because in another 20 years time, when, when we can look at the evidence, there'll be something else. We'll be growing teeth. We won't need a root canal sealers anymore because no one will be doing root canal treatment. So we have to take as much from the information that we have, which is what the research is showing us, and they are just physical properties. What they do is the paper lines up three or four of these sealers and they test one against one another. They see how much one flows, how much the other ones, the hardness of the set, whether it dissolves, what the pH is, do all of that. And that's all, that's all we know. Um, and from there, as I say, you, you take your ideas and you then slot the, what you believe the right chemical is, and then you keep your fingers crossed that it's all gonna work well for you. Um, we know that it'll work in the short term. The interesting thing is the long term but I ain't gonna be here in the long term to know that. But I hope I've made the right decision.